Um, so I think we were, we're, we're back to rhythms and, uh, what we, what we started was kind of like a review. So I did, I actually did a, 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 a bit of a review the last time of, of the previous time. So I'm absolutely not going to do that tonight, but what I want to do, let me just skip through this. Is um, I kind of wanted to go through the the um, the the counting um, sulfage. So let me yeah there we go. Um, with especially with the numbers in the Eastman because I, I think that those are the ones that that we get to use the most often, and so um, I wanted to regroup on that and see let me get a let me get a whiteboard going where am i uh, huh, 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 huh. i'm gonna stop this i know sorry this looks a little um it looks a little schizophrenic here let me let me see if i can get my stuff together here there we go All right, so so there are basically the two the two uh, systems that I kind of want to want to want to cover. One of them is the Eastman, and then the other one is the, the the numbers one. Now you'll have your choice. Of course, you have your choice of which one you feel most comfortable with. But like I said last week, it's probably a good idea to get comfy with with uh, with two of them. Uh, and basically, these these systems, let's just kind of say east and numbers. Um, they're basically here just so so that so that you know how to how to subdivide the beat. So the the beat is always depending on on what time signature you're in. The one thing that's really gonna always be consistent is that each beat is gonna get a number. So if you have a time signature that requires one beat per measure, in other words, one pulse per measure that, that repeats, your, your pulsation is always going to be one, 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 one. And so one measure is going by, one measure is going by. If you have a time signature that requires two beats in a measure, then that'll be one, two, one, two, one, two. If you have a time signature that has three beats in a measure, one, two, three one two three and that's essentially how you how you do the rhythms and then from there on it's just counting between the number one and however many beats in a measure you want <coughs> or how many beats in a measure the, the, the composer wanted <coughs> so both of these guys do the same the same thing for the for the beats they just put the number of the beat But where they start to differ is when you when you actually uh, divide divide the beat into two. So you say the number of the beat, and for the east one you say take, and for the number system you say the number of the beat, and then you say and, and from now on I'm just going to call it a plus, and that'll signify and if everybody's okay with that. All right, so then what we do is that then we divide, we can divide each one of these subdivided then into two again, yet again, we'll still say the number of the beat for both systems. And we'll still say the Te in the Eastman. And we'll still say the N here. But then for the Eastman, you add a ta on each one of those. And on this one, they're kind of different. So the, the, the first subdivision uh, or the second subdivision of the beat here is an E and the fourth subdivision gets an A. 
<clears throat> this is why in rehearsals a lot of times your your conductor might refer to something as the the e of one or the a ah of one that's where it's going to be the the that's where that communication is going to take place there and that's one of the things that's different about this numbering system over the easement because if i said the ta of one you don't know whether it's that second 16th note or the third 16th note if the quarter note is getting one beat From here on, you know, uh, then then we it, it, it gets a little bit angrier than, than this. And, and there's really, since these are the most common ones, we're going to leave them here. But let's do some examples here. In that if, if the number of the beat, uh, if you have four beats in a measure, uh, and you have one here, you have two here, you have three here, you have four there. That number is never going to change with either one of these systems. <clears throat> but if you're going to want to count eighth notes on the on the numbering system, you would count one and two and three and four and and then that whole thing. There's a bar line and then that repeats. On the under the Eastman system, then the, this would be. One te, two te, three te, four te. And if you subdivide it into the 16th notes, then this would be one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and. Uh. And so that's, that's how it would look like underneath the notes. On the, for the, um, for the Eastman, then then all of the all of these spaces would be ta. And so the way that it would sound like it would sound certainly it would sound a little bit more staccato, it would sound a little bit more more short, less less smooth. So the first one would be if you're counting in four, it would be one, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, or one e and uh, two. Oh, I'm sorry. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and the second one, the east one. One te, two te, three te, four te. One te, two te, three te, four te. So then, if you subdivide them, one e and the two e and the three e and the four e and the one e and the two e and the three e and the four e, and that sounds a lot smoother. You can you can shorten it up if you want to and go one e and the two e and the three e, but that sounds kind of silly. If you're if you're gonna be counting with uh, with more articulation, one ta te ta two ta te ta three ta te ta four ta te ta one ta te ta two ta te ta three ta te ta four ta te ta, and all it all it would take you would be twenty minutes to actually reconcile both of these systems. So I suggest that as wind players, you just kind of get familiar with one or the other and then just put it in context with whatever it is that you're, that, that you're doing, okay? Let me get out of this for a second. Where is my... Okay, uh, that's kind of what I wanted to say about that. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some 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 examples of how you know how it is that we actually do this on on, on music and how you can do this on on music. So let me go. I'm gonna go there right now and show you this this piece of music here. I'm gonna get it a little bit bigger than this. This is the Brandon Burke Concerto. This is the same the same piece that we heard. However, this is the first movement, and I'm just going to use one phrase of this movement from here, from this measure right here to this measure, and we'll just call that one phrase. And so, if you're using, let's just uh, let's just say that we're going to use the uh, the the number system. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger so that it makes sense. And let's say that I'm just kind of working on this passage, and I'm and I'm and I'm just kind of looking at this, uh, and it's giving me it's giving me a hard time. Well, you don't see this 
yet you haven't you don't you haven't seen the there's my uh just a second it does not well did the share screen go away for you guys Oh, there we go. Finally, something is weird. Um, so my time signature is actually four four. This this says so at the beginning of the other piece, but you don't you wouldn't see it here because we're right in the middle of the first movement. So if you you can see the difference here between a, a half rest and a whole rest. The whole rest, the gentleman took his hat off, and the half rest, the the hat is still on. This is a quarter rest, and this is a, an eighth note. So under this time signature, the quarter note gets one beat. I'm sorry, there are four beats in a measure, and the quarter note is the one that gets one beat. So for this measure, you would have beat one and two would be in the rest. Beat three is that rest quarter note, and the downbeat of beat four is that eighth rest. That means that this eighth note comes in on the end of four. From here on, if you're just going to actually just um, do the, the rhythm solfish, then this would be one and two and three and four. And, and then that finishes at that measure. And then that kind of repeats here, one and two and three. Notice that this is a quarter note. So that takes me to beat four, which is a rest. And this is an, uh, an eighth rest. So that means that this comes in on the upbeat that must come in on the end. Uh, so this is what, what in rhythm so fish, that's what that measure would look like. And the way that I would count that would be that I would start with the rest and I would just actually conduct them to myself and go one, two, three, and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and up. Now notice that I kind of have to get under. <clears throat> when you're practicing this stuff, always try to go to, to beat one of the next measure. That's that sounds way more natural. And and so if you're working through a difficult rhythm, and I know that this isn't, but if you're working through a diff difficult rhythm, try to always make it to the downbeat of the next measure or whatever downbeat makes sense. That way, when you practice this, two, three, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and the one, then that makes more sense, and you're actually just practicing how your phrase would actually go. So if you're going to write these down, which sometimes you, you actually want to write them down just, just so that you have it, you know, have the rhythm firm in your head. And I, once again, I know that these are simple rhythms. I'm just showing you how how you could actually work through them. Uh, this one would be, beat two would be a rest, and a three, beat four is a rest, and a one. So that measure will be one, and a three, and a one. And you can see that the next measure is very similar, where you would have rest on two, and then this would be end of three. But now beat four is a rest. So that measure, one, end of three, and the rest on four, okay? So that's basically how you work through through a rhythm uh, that, that's giving you trouble. If uh, if you wanna do, you know, something like, like this one, for instance, and that, that changes the rhythm, then, then let me do this on, on the Eastman. Then this would be one. Ta, I'm sorry, te ta. Two. Te ta three. Te ta four. Ta te ta one. So that measure. One te ta two te ta three te ta four ta te ta one. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. Because that, that becomes kind of like a, these kind of become a, a, what is it, a tongue twister. 
1 theta 2 theta 3 theta 4 theta 1. And so this is the kind of stuff that, that whenever we stop at rehearsal and I say, well, let's, let's, let's count it out loud or let's clap the rhythm and stuff like that, that's where stuff like this comes in handy because you can kind of slow it down in your head and just um, take that whole measure and look at the measure as a grid. Uh, so you should really look at this measure, what happens between here and here and here and here. So the counting solfage is really just a way for you to actually make a grid over this measure where you would have B1, B2, B3, B4. And then that gives you a, 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 a little a metric by which you can actually say, okay, well, time is moving that way. And this is how I'm gonna measure time. So this is what, what this actually allows you to do. So in your mind, you can just take that, that whole thing and slow it way down. And so if I was only having trouble with the first beat, then I might just concentrate on that and take, take the first note of the first beat to the first note of the second beat. And that becomes my world at that moment. And so, so let's say that that was a very, very difficult, very, very difficult rhythm then all I would do is actually make this my world for the time being. And I would just kind of start <clears throat> by saying, okay, here's the beat. One, two. And that means that the downbeat would be down, the upbeat would be up, and then that beat two would be over here. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So it would be one, two. So if I have to slow down that rhythm, one, theta two, one, theta two. And so notice what I'm doing. I said, I'm making the upbeat click. One, theta two. And so if I have a really, really difficult rhythm with, with you know, 16th rests and stuff like that, and I, I can't work out the, the, the syllables, this is what you do. So you just break it down into that one, that one beat. Or even if it's really difficult, if you have like a cadenza or something like that, and break it down into a half a beat, whatever it is, but then that becomes your world, and then you just repeat it. One, theta, two. One, theta, two. One, theta, two. It's not good enough to just say one, theta, two, because that can be said one, theta, two, in whatever rhythm it is that you want. You have to be able to put it in rhythm. One, theta, two. One, theta, two. And then, so you, then you practice it, bringing it up to speed with a metronome. One theta two, 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 one theta two. And just make sure that every time with the metronome that you're exactly hitting it exactly with the metronome. So that then that whole measure by the time that you prepare the whole thing, one theta two, theta three, theta four, theta one. Dum da da dum da da dum da 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 dum. And now it's time once you figure it out, now it's time to actually pick up your horn and do it. And that's, that actually, that whole process that I just told you could take you just seconds to, to, to work out. Where sometimes you, you're working on, on, on something and you just hit the wrong rhythm and you just hit the wrong rhythm. Or worse yet, the worst thing that you could do with something like this is the, for the, the, the rest of the piece will be going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you get to that measure one, two, three, four, and then you keep going, one, two, three, merrily you go along. You can do that if you're playing everything by yourself. But you can't do that if you're playing with somebody else because they don't know what you're doing and it's very, very confusing. And this is where, where you can kind of see that certain people <clears throat> get kind of frustrated when, when a musician does that when you have 80 people in a, in a measure and you, you see, you hear one person doing that because that, that messes everybody else up. It's kind of like, okay, well, everybody has agreed to go at this pulse and one person has just broken that agreement. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like everybody's driving down the road on their, on their, on their lane. And now all of a sudden you see somebody just kind of slow way down in the fast lane. You can't do that. Well, you can do that, but you're going to get in a wreck. And so then, then, then that's a, that's a different, different story. Okay.
All right. So that's essentially how, how it is that you, that you work these out. Regardless of what, what system it is that you want to do, is that break it down to the smallest, to the smallest piece that makes sense from, from the time that makes sense to start it to the time that it makes sense to end it. Try not to end something, accounting exercise. Try not to end it on the, to t try not to do that unless the music actually calls for that. Because, because that, that little lean is, it, it tends to, um, it tends to create a lot of, a, a lot of mistakes. You, you kind of go, uh, resolve it. It's kind of like going, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, ti. You, you, you kind of want to go, solve it, solve it, solve it, get it, you know. The same thing happens with rhythms, you know, when you go, and the, and the, and the, this is where, um, this is where a percussion technique kind of comes in. If you have a counting exercise that, that requires for you to do that, and you feel like, uh, I'm waiting too late to play that last note, which is what normally happens because people want to put that last note right on the beat. If that's what happens when you have a counting exercise, let's say that you have something like, let's say that you have something exactly like this. But in the next measure, sorry, in the next measure, you don't have anything. So there's nothing really on that, on that, on that next measure. What I would do is that I, in my, at least in my mind, I would hit one. And so a drummer would take that measure and these would, and this is, this is really cool, by the way, and you can also use this as a counting system. Your, your downbeats would be on your right hand. This would be your left, right, left, right. Now notice that this is a downbeat and this is the rest is also a downbeat. So you would use your right hand and then that would make this your left. Whoops. Sorry. Right, right. Yeah. In this case, you'd have to double stick it. Let's just say that, that this would be two, two L's in here. Bob's going to kill me for that. But um, if if you were actually alternating hands, you would go right, left, right, left, right, right. So um, one and two and three and up. So right, left, right, left, right, left, left. And you would actually ghost that, that first one. And that ghost will actually give you the pulse that, that it is that, that you need. Okay, I'll show you more better better stuff on sticking later. That was I kind of goofed that up, but but if if the counting doesn't work, try using your hands. So this is one. This is another reason why it is that, that we clap a lot of times because you you just kind of bring it to to the physical self. Okay, we'll we'll do some more of that in, in just a second. But that's that's how how to do this. I just kind of chose a simple exercise. Uh, you can take this whatever piece of music it is that you that you that you're working on right now, where you have a, a, a rhythm that's actually giving you giving you trouble, and just kind of break it break it down this way. If you have a PDF, uh, then you can just kind of color it this way. If you don't, then just do it in pencil so you can erase stuff. Um, so a lot of people in in, in performance. You know, when you when you have when you have something like that that you've kind of written up and stuff like that, it's perfectly okay to, for you to take a written up piece of music for for performance. You wrote it up. You know what you did. So even though it might be a little messy, you know what you did. And so if that's what you're looking at when you practice, that's what you should be looking at when you play it in front of people. Also, there's also another. This is also another thing that kind of. <laughs> it's a pet peeve of, of a lot of uh, a lot of conductors. A lot of times, a lot of times, you can you can really really tell whether people are going to fall in the same trap or not because they don't write stuff down. 
And so this, you can see this in rehearsal. You can see that 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 you just worked out a, a difficult passage, and you see nobody writing it down, and you know that it's going to happen again. So it's a good habit to get into to actually notate and write things down. Um, so a couple of ways to actually do that would be would be uh, if if this particular entrance is very difficult for you, make sure that you do something like this. That signifies that you understand that this is a downbeat. And that means that whenever, whenever you, you're, you're listening to the piece and you're counting your rests and stuff like that, you make sure by, by writing something like that down, you make sure that what you're, what you're stressing here is that that downbeat happens and you have to look for either for the conductor or for clue from the, from the ensemble to, uh, to actually make your entrance correct. Okay. So that's one way to do it. Uh, um, you know, there are there are many ways that people can can just say kind of look and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm not going to go through through all of that. But this is a convenient way. Another thing to do is if you have a really complicated measure, I'm going to treat this as a complicated measure here, and and it's difficult for you to find the downbeat. So you can do the same thing like that. You can do your down arrows like that, and then you can do your up arrows like this. So if you're having difficulty with that with that measure, that might make sense, especially, and it will make a lot more sense if you actually practice it. Because just writing it down, you know, will will get will get your brain behind it, but the, but it won't do anything for your body mechanics. So you 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 do it up here, and then you do it with your body, and then it becomes then it becomes part of you. So it's really a good idea. To write your music up, um, especially when 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 you're doing it, uh, when what you write down is, is is actually what's what's happening. Sometimes you write stuff down that's wrong, but so I, I would even um, I would even say that that even under those circumstances, that's a, that's a good thing. All right, let me stop this for a minute and. Uh, I want to share a couple of files with you. So just a second. These are coming via the, the chat. So let me see. There are gonna be a couple of um, a couple of files coming at you, a couple of PDFs coming at you on the on the chat just a second when I can find it. Lessons, PDFs. There we go. There's one. There are going to be two of these. Each one of these has 30, 30 little exercises, and I'll, I'll let me share those with you. And so this is where this is where we're going to go into in the breakout rooms, and 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 we're actually going to try this. And I want to do something before we do that, but um, where am I? Where are my PDFs? There they are. So, so the first one looks like this. Now we haven't discussed this, but this is a staff, even though there's only one line on it. This is called a rhythm staff, just because the, the, uh, percussionists see this all the time. It's not not pitched. So all they want you to focus on is really the, the you know the, that that one particular rhythm. So so it doesn't make any sense to put five lines in there and waste a bunch of ink. Uh, so let's say that I was working out the rhythm in that in that first one, and actually I want to do the one without without the rest first. Let me see. So there are two of them. The difference between the two is one of them says count rhythms with notes, and the other one is rhythms and rests. So I, I want to I want to do the, the the one with rhythms with notes first, and so if I take this and I and I do the same the same type of exercise that I did with with um, uh, with the Brandenburg, then I can just kind of choose whatever system it is that I want to do. Let's say that I just kind of want to do the Eastman here. Notice the time signature here two four. That means that that there are two beats in a measure and the quarter note gets one beat. So then this is beat one, here's beat two, 
here's beat one, here's beat two, here's beat one, there's beat two, here's beat one, and there's beat two. So I have those four measures laid out, right? And I can go back and say, okay, well, where's my upbeat? The, if the quarter note gets a beat, this, this is a subdivision of four. So this is the downbeat and this is the upbeat. Under this system is Te goes right there. The Te goes right there. Te goes right there. Te goes right there. Te there. And then I just have to look at the 16th notes and put Ta under them. Okay. But then you can't just leave it at that. You actually have to actually go, okay, if the pulse is one, two, one, two, one, two, then how does this lay out? One, two, ta, te, ta, one, te, two, one, ta, te, ta, two, te, one, te, two, and that's it. If you can't get to that point Im immediately, then go from the first measure to the second measure. One, two, ta, te, ta, one. And do it again. One, two, ta, te, ta, one. Okay, I got that. Go to the second measure. One, te, two. Got it? Yes. Go to the next one. One, ta, te, ta, two, te, one. Notice that I'm going to the downbeat. One, ta, te, ta, two, te, one. And then the last measure, one, te, two. And then you start putting it together. And if that's too difficult, then just put two measures together at a time. Like if I was going to put the first two measures together, one, two, ta, te, ta, one, te, two. Put those two together. So the whole exercise one more time, see if you can go with me. Ready? Now, one, two, ta, te, ta, one, te, two, one, ta, te, ta, two, te, one, te, two. And try as much as you can when, when you're doing this not to read the written material. Read the notes. Okay? You already worked out the, the written material, and that's how you do it. Okay? All right, so now let's get to some 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 of the funner funner stuff here. This will be conducting class 101. And if you if you um, if you are gonna feel a little self conscious, then then don't um, you can you can turn your video off if you want to. But try if if. If you can, uh, and and you have you have it available to you, at least use a mirror or something like that, so you can see what you're what you're doing. And I'm going to use the. Um, let me see if I can fix this a little bit. Fix my camera a little bit, because I want to use my body, because everything else is just. Uh, Elevator at that time. And it looks looks to me like I'm not exactly in the middle of it. There we go. Okay. Alright, so I'm gonna use I'm gonna use my, my, my body as a back backdrop over here because if I go over here you can't see my arm. Uh, essentially there are a lot of people recognize some patterns when you when you conduct and they're 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 uh, uh, they're really common and they, kind of, they, they, they make absolute sense. There's no rule, by the way. When, when people are conducting, there's really no rules. Uh, I've seen people get mad at conductors because, they're, because a piece is in three and they're not conducting a pattern of three. And it's like, how, you know, who told you that it needed to be like that? They're not. When, when you're talking about a conductor, there they really aren't any rules. You just <laughs> you hang on for dear life is what what happens but when you're actually using conducting to help help your rhythms then it makes sense to have a, a template to follow and so loosely speaking the template is going to be if you have and i'm just going to go up to up to four let's we'll go up to five if you have a piece of music that calls for five beats in a measure or at one beat in a measure let that be the downbeat. And so you take your dominant hand. So if you're a righty, use your right hand. If you're a lefty, use your left hand. You should be able to do this with either, but, but it's typically your dominant hand, the one that actually sets the rhythm. So let, that, let the downbeat always be a strong pulse 
that actually has some balance to it. Balance, balance, balance. So you have one, two, or one, 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 one. So you can see my hand kind of bounce, 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 bounce. Okay. So that's if you if you have a, a, a time signature of like one four or one two or one one. So if it's a one one, then that then that means that a whole note gets one beat. If it's a one two, that means that a half note gets one beat. If it's a one four, that means that a quarter note is getting one beat. And the measure is going by really quickly. One, 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 one. That would be a measure. If the if the numerator, the top number, is a two, then the pattern is is like a J. So we go one, two, one, two, one, two. And so written down, if I write this pattern down, it kind of looks like a J. Not giving me the annotate thing. Hmm. I wonder if it's because I made. Mike, this might be happening because I made you a host, but but it's not it's not letting me do some some things. Okay, so I'm gonna draw these. If you if you want to take a notepad and, and, and draw these, um, then I'll go through them with with the video. A pattern of of uh, of one will always be down. So you always you, your your hand will always do this down. A pattern of two will look like one, two. So one, two, one, two. A pattern of three will go one down, will go across your body, then out and then up. One, two, actually that's, that's four. <laughs> so this would be one, two, this would be one, two, three, four is actually up here. This is a pattern of three. Let me, let me get, get, uh, let, I'm going to restart this. I haven't done this in a while, so pardon me. So one will, will always be that, uh, one, two, there it is. So beat one, beat two will be up here. A pattern of three will be one, down, three will be out, or two will be out, and three will be up. So here's one, two, then three. Pattern of four will be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, there, that's better. So the way that it actually looks like, if you're looking at the video, then that would be one, two, one, two, so it kind of looks like a J when you're when you're doing this. One, two. Now you don't have to do it as large as I'm doing it. I'm doing it large so you can see it on the video. But a lot of times, just either your finger or just actually just in front of you. One, two, one, two, one, or one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And so these are just patterns. But what happens when, when you get when you kind of get used to these is that this becomes um, this becomes kind of like a kind of like a safety net. When you're when you're really reading a, a, a difficult rhythm and you're going, that's not right. Uh, 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 uh. That becomes that that whole thing of actually making the, the the physical attempt at where the beats are. It becomes a really really important safety net. 
And so right now the, the rhythms that we were counting are so simple that that's, that's just, that's only for practice. But when you, when you get to a difficult measure and you actually put this to it, you'll see what I mean. It's, it's kind of like a, a way to solve a riddle. Every rhythm is a puzzle. And so you just kind of, there's a, there's a solution to it and you just kind of have to find how to, how to break it. And this kind of breaks that code. Okay. So one more time, if it's in one down, 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 down. If it's in two, it's a J one, two, one, two, one, two. If it's in three, it's one out, up, one out, up. If it's in four, it's one in, out, up, one in, out, up. Okay. And the way that I was taught five, I think I've taught, taught you guys that if it's in five, you go, one, it's the same pattern as four, but then you use your shoulders. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Like that. And so that's a, that's, that's a common pattern. And you'll see all conductors use that pattern. Um, there are, by the way, these also work in, in compound time. But this will also teach you a little bit in compound time. So if, let's say by compound time, I mean, if you have a time signature of six, eight, you can conduct this in six if you want to. And I'll show you how to do that also. Uh, but most of the time with six, eight, nine, eight, pretty much a lot of times uh, music that's actually written with this as the denominator with an eighth note as a denominator or a 16th note as a denominator. A lot of times that music is going to be in compound time where you don't want to conduct the eighth note unless it's super, super slow. But at six, eight, for instance, if you have six eighth notes in a measure and the eighth note gets one beat, if it's slow, you can conduct this in six and what the, the resulting pattern, there are two ways to, to to do that but the, the 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 pattern is one two three and then you change over four five and then up so one two three then change four five and then six is up so one two three four five six one two three four five six so you have two of three of them in two of them out and one up one in in out out up one two three four five six that's one way to do this another way to do to that, that a lot of people do it is in a christmas tree in a christmas tree fashion one two three four five six so one two three four five six you know, like that, that can be done, you know, without learning any patterns. And so that actually could be done with anything. One, two, you know, whatever. So, um, so once again, there's no, no definite way to, to, to do this. However, if you're going to count a six, or if you're going to count a nine at the speed of which much, much of this music is actually done like a march in six, you would have yet so your conducting would be like like that, and you've seen me try to conduct that before. No, you can't do it that way. So compound time means that you can actually divide that measure into two. Each one would be subdivided in three. So one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. But if you see what I'm doing is that my pattern with my arm is two. One, two, one, two, one, two. In other words, a six, eight measure in a fast time signature will get two beats. The measure will get two beats, but the eighth note is still getting one subdivision of the beat. So, so that measure then is divided by threes. One, two, three, four, five, six, da, 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 And the same thing happens with nine, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's the, the difficulty when you're counting 
uh, compound time signatures or anything really that has seven. Between one and 10, all of the numbers have one syllable except seven. So that seven always confuses the issue. Because as soon as you say seven, you have to say it twice as fast as you say everything else. Notice what I'm doing if I'm counting it in, in nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You see that? I'm using two syllables for the seven. Unless I actually just decide to say go sept, which a lot of people could do. One, two, three, four, five, six, sept, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, sept, eight, nine. You know, and that that becomes a little bit better. But I, I, I never got used to that. That to me is, is very, very difficult to say. So I always say seven in there. Okay. All right. So that's basically, yeah. Um, yeah, Matt. So send. So some people actually, you, you can, you can, you can do that. That's a good, that's a good suggestion. I don't think that I've ever seen that before, but that's good. I, I just could never do it because my, my little brain couldn't wrap around it. So I just always say the seven, but kind of cheat on it. Okay. So, so that's essentially how, you know, how it is that, 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 that you, if you have something really, really difficult, which you should kind of bring up this week, maybe something that's always kind of thrown you for a loop and just kind of microscopically go into that, that section and really, really break it down into it, into its tiny little parts. Um, and see if you can finally, you know, crack that because it's, they are, I'm telling you, they're puzzles and they're, they're really, really interesting to, to, um, to break that way. Uh, but what on, on your own, what you should be able to do. And this week, when, 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 when you actually do these as practice exercises, please practice these with a metronome and actually take them, take them to the fastest level that you, that, that you, that you feel like you're in control. Uh, because that that'll work on 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 how it is that you're actually voicing this, and and getting you actually to read read ahead. But practice this with a metronome. Don't get behind or or ahead of the metronome. If you find yourself doing that, then slow it down a bit and stay exactly with the metronome as you're as you're doing this. Okay. So for right now, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to count the first three lines, and I'm going to use the I'll use the Eastman's uh, system for the three. And I'll count them just to kind of check to see what it is that you have underneath them. So you can count along with, but but don't uh, don't don't open your mic. So I'm going to start from the from the top. Ready? Yeah. One, two, ta te ta. One te two. One ta te ta two te one te two. One te two ta te ta one te two. One ta te ta two te one. One te two. One te two. One theta two te one te two, and that's that's the first three lines. Okay. If uh, if you were gonna go on to the to the three four measures, uh, I'm gonna do all three of them, all three lines. They would they would come out to one two three, one theta two, one theta two te three te one. One ta theta two te three te one ta theta two te three one two three one one te two three one te two one ta theta two ta theta three te one okay so that's what that's what you would actually see in writing uh, my the the challenge to you would be would be if if that speed was was too fast to actually say these things, slow it down some, especially that second line on the three four. If that was too easy, then bump it up. One two three two three three one two three one two three one like that, and actually and then you can actually just take your instrument and just uh, build on it. That's the last step is to actually take your horn and do what it do what it says. Okay, you can do this on you can do this using a scale pattern, or you can do this all on one note. 
Um, that's that's really up to you as to as to how to how to practice this on your horn. But you should actually the the last step should be for you to actually take your horn up to your mouth and do this with a metronome, and that that gets you used to playing with a metronome and and looking at patterns. So what this does over time is that it that it creates the habit of you reading these rhythms as a pattern so that you don't so that you can do it as second nature when when they when they kind of come up for you uh and that's the, you know i was having we were having a conversation in our group and, and and i was in that the, the one of the best approaches to this kind of reading that that i've ever seen and that's worked it worked wonders for me. All through college, I had difficulty sight reading. I was a really, really poor sight reader. Uh, and so one of the things that happened to, happened to me was that in one of the summers, uh, I got invited one of the, um, one of my buddies, uh, his father-in-law was a member of the, um, uh, the airmen. Um, it was a, the band of the West. Um, they they were um, it was a, a, a military band, but they it was a jazz band, and they were quite good. They were really really good. They were they were stationed out of San Antonio, and in the summer they had a reading band that met at a bar at a bar. Hmm, imagine that. Um, and so uh, my buddy invited me. He was he was a tenor saxophone player, and he he invited me. He said they'll let you sit in and and, and stuff. And I just kind of like was intimidated all to hell. But I did, uh, I did go, and I found nothing but encouragement from these guys. And they were pros, and they would they didn't mind. You know when when you suck, you suck. You know what can I tell you? <laughs> but it was evident so that nobody had to tell me how you know, how, how bad I read. But the thing is that, that they didn't, they had all of these charts and some of them were just like handwritten and really, really poor manuscript and stuff like that on, on what used to be called onion skins and which is a ditto machine. But what they did is that they chart after chart, after chart, after chart, all they did was read. They didn't work on anything. They just threw it out there. And they would just, the, 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 the mission was a meet you at the end. And so things like repeats, things like, like DS and, and, and stuff like that, all of that was figured out on the fly. And this band knew how to do that well. And here I am going, what's the tempo? You know, after a while, you know, with encouragement from, from the, the other trumpet players just said, dude, we've all been, we've all been there. So just hang in there, hang in there, hang in there, you know. And after a while, it it really kind of stuck to the point where right now I'm not the greatest sight reader, but I can sight read pretty well now. And all it did was, all it took was for me to just kind of do it over and over and over again and start reading by patterns. And so this is this is my encouragement to you. I just kind of move that, want to move that forward as best as I can, you know, the best way to learn how to read is to read. If you have an opportunity to 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 get together now that the things are relaxing a little bit, you can get together in twos and threes. Um, reading duets is fantastic because you can make up that rule with each other and make a pact with each other. Don't stop until the end. So you set a metronome on your duet book, which duet books are pretty much everywhere. You can get PDFs of any kind of duet book that, that, that you want uh, for like instruments or for bass clef and treble clef instruments. A good combination would be if there's a trumpet player that's working on transposition and you have a trombone player that would, you know, you can make it for two C instruments and have the, the, the B flat instrument transpose. So any kind of combination like that that you, that, that you want to do would be would be fantastic. But the 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 rule is tell yourself we're gonna set a metronome. We're gonna count off at the beginning, and I'll meet you at the end. And that's that doing that a few a few hundred times will make you a much much better reader. Okay. All right. So our homework. Uh, for this, I don't want to. I don't want to leave this exercise without, without uh, getting to our homework. Let's see.
So we already did this. This was, I'll get to the tempos in a, in a minute. So this is your homework. This is in, in the, uh, on the, on the slide. So if you ever want to refer back to it, so finish out the PDFs. Uh, there are 30 exercises in each, in each one of them. Whoops. Uh, this is what we did in the breakout room, but your homework is going to be to actually finish them out like this. So it's the counting, counting rests and notes and that kind of stuff for uh, 20 to 30 for, for, for both of those PDFs that I sent out. Okay. And then we'll, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do a mass, mass count again next time, but whoever's brave enough to actually, you know, count them out, I'll let you have it. So that, that way you don't, you don't get to hear from me all the time. Okay. So that's for next week. I do want to go back a little bit and, and talk to you about tempos. Um, this, <clears throat> this is also kind of important because to, for, for, um, for tempos, it's good to have an idea of, of, uh, of what they are without, without having a metronome in front of you. And so, um, the best way that I, that I know how to figure out tempos is to, to have one that's, that's, that's always in your, in your head that you're, that you're really, really familiar with. And so a pulse of 120 is what, what my suggestion is that you guys really concentrate on is that that could be the center of your world. And I'm saying that because every band person has played a march. And all of the Sousa marches that we, that, that we play center around that speed. And so the quintessential march that, that we all play is stars, uh, uh, the Stars and Stripes. And so you don't have to start the, the, the beginning for, for a lot of people might be a little bit different. But if you if you go... That tempo for most of us, we kind of know what that tempo is. And so let's let's find out how close Robert was. Robert was slow. Not too slow, but slow enough. That's 120. All right, so if that's 120, uh, and that's March tempo, uh, that's that third one that, that, that gets put in there, a la Marcia. If that's 120, then, then it would be really, really easy to figure out 60. Because if this... If that's 120, if that's a pulse of 120, then that's 60. Every other one, right? So all I did was I just half the 120 and that becomes 60. And that's another popular tempo. We might call that lento or adagio. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A tempo in between, which, by the way, that tempo of 96, if you let, if you let a, 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 a group of people that are not like experts, if you let the, a group of people play any piece of music, either a very slow one or a very fast one, and they play it for long enough, they play the same piece of music for hours, they'll end up at this speed, 96. For some reason, that's a very, very natural human tempo. I don't know why, but it is. So the, the, um, the, the way to remember that tempo, which is an andante, andante means walking. And that's probably why it's such a human tempo, because people walk. Uh, that is a really, really, really popular speed. And uh, if you've ever taken CPR, that's the... That's the tempo at which you should do chest compressions. And so what the, the two songs that I've heard that, that, that they tell you to think about at that speed depends on whether you're, whether you're an optimist or a pessimist. 
If you're an optimist, the song is staying alive by the by the Bee Gees. And if you're a pessimist, it, it would be another one bites the dust. But they're both the same speed. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. Or ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, staying alive. You know, so they're both the same speed, and that's. That's a very, very common human speed. Let's see how close Robert got to 96. Ninety-six. I was much closer to that. Close enough. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. Ooh, right? So that's an andante tempo, and that's actually that's somewhat of a brisk andante, but 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 it is an andante tempo. So those are those are three speeds that we that we kind of uh, uh, have. They're they're the most common ones. And so if you have a piece of music that's actually labeled lento or adagio, try it around around that around the sixty mark. If you have an andante piece, ninety two to ninety six somewhere around there and if you have something that's a la marcia then then uh then a 120. of course there are pieces that are much faster than that uh, um, um a marking with that would be faster than that would be like presto which which means it's magic um sorry it doesn't mean it's magic it means that it's that it's fast Um, and Jen, the, the heartbeat thing, the uh, 96, the, um, a pulse rate from, for a normal human being should be 60 to 80 beats per minute. They, they use chest compressions at that, at that speed to, to actually keep person, keep, try to keep people alive. But for most, the, the, a regular heartbeat on an, on an adult that's, in relatively good shape is 60 to, to, to 80, if they're calm. Uh, so let's see, anything else? Oh, with conducting, by the way, um, you don't have to introduce the other hand, but if you actually want to, your non, um, your, your, uh, if you're if you're ready, your non-dominant hand then is responsible for other stuff that you want to convey. So if th that kind of conducting is is not something that you're going to conduct yourself because you're not going to conduct your own crescendo and decrescendo to yourself, or hopefully you won't because that's crazy. But you can do it if you want to. But if you actually want to get up in in in, in front of the ensemble, which I've, I've I've suggested for many of you guys to actually just kind of get up there and get some get some uh, get some ensemble time. Uh, the other hand just does pretty much anything else that you want, and so you use your you use your your body to 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 actually uh, mimic what it is that you want the music to come out. And so there are some things that that, that are kind of like that, that a lot of people use, for instance, a crescendo. Would go from down, up, and then and then a decrescendo like this. Then of course this means quiet, or this means shut up, or that's the wrong place and stuff like that. So you conduct your vocabulary, then then becomes your non-dominant hand for the most part, and then you use the rest of your body to actually convey whatever it is that you that you want out of the music. And a lot of this happens mostly in rehearsal. And that's why, that's why the term maestro is so important, because maestro ultimately means teacher. And the, the supposition is, is not so much that the guy up there knows so much more than we do, but that we've all decided to actually do things the way that, 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 that he thinks they ought to go. And so there's, a, there's, there's, there's this immediate contract that actually happens that that he's going to be in charge of interpretation mostly. And if I just kind of follow what it is that, what it is that he does, then, then, then we're communicating. And that's, the, that's another art form by itself because it's another level of communication. 
and it's beautiful when it happens and you know it when it happens when you when you when you feel right about you responding to the conductor and the conductor feels like they that like they have all the freedom in the world by doing whatever it is that they're that they're doing up there so i kind of wanted to to make it a point to to go there because there's stuff about tempo that I have not discussed with you, which is this about tradition. There are things in tempos that, that about rhythm that you cannot write down. They cannot be written down. They are assumed. Um, and, and a lot of it really has to do with what style of music it is that you're playing and whether, whether you have experience listening to that or experience playing that type of music. An example is swing. Well, I'll show you what, what I mean in a minute. A lot more people in this world think that they can swing when they really can't yet. Yet. It's a learned skill. And most of that skill is not done by playing. There's a big, big difference. Uh, there's a big difference about, uh, about learning these type of nuances by playing and learning these type of nuances by listening. Nuances take more listening than playing. You really have to listen to a lot of this music to start getting the idea, ah, that's what they're doing. That's what it sounds like. And, and so much so, and, and not so much as to what it is that they're doing, but what I'm playing sounds wrong. <laughs> so when you try to imitate that style, you're going, why does, why does the way that I try to copy that sound so wrong rhythm wise? And so here is where, where active listening really, really, really takes, uh, takes a part of your, your ear training. You have to listen to whatever music it is that you, that you want to play, whatever style it is that you want to play. You have to do a lot of listening to that particular style. And I'm going to show you the difference in, in, in just a minute, but that cannot be, you can, you can try to write this in, on the music and you'll see, um, you'll see, um, like uh, who was it that was really good? Uh, uh, Percy Granger was really good about writing instructions. Mahler was really good about writing instructions. The problem is, that that trying to translate Mahler's instructions into English doesn't work very well. Doesn't even work in German. But but so so some composers are really really good about writing down what it is that they want, and still even as good as they are writing writing everything down, you don't get it. Uh, so writing rhythms has its limitations. At some point, at some point, especially with nuances and especially with stylistic. Uh, um, features, you just have to be well versed in that music to be able to copy that style, which is one of the reasons why I don't play swing music in, in, in Acqui, because it, it just kind of really gnaws at me. Um, uh, there's no way that you can get a, any wind ensemble, no matter what the experience level it is. I've never heard even professional wind ensembles be able to swing. Okay including the syncopated clock. And by the way, when some of these, some of that music, especially the, the music of, of um, uh, um, oh, what's his name, syncopated clock and the, the, the typewriter and all that kind of stuff. He knew that the people that he was writing this stuff for couldn't swing. So he didn't nuance it. Leroy Anderson, thank you very much. So he didn't, uh, he already knew that that was going to be an issue. So he didn't make it a point that people had to swing. So it, it's the, the, the music, it is, it's, it's what it is. However, I want to show you, I'm, I'm going to show you an example of what, what it is that I mean. Uh, other things that are, that are sometimes written and sometimes they're not are called ornaments. This is more important on, on, it depends on the type of, um, it depends on the type of music that you're playing. This is very, very common in Baroque music. And uh, because Baroque music was really, really frilly, that the, the music, Baroque music looked just like, just like Baroque 
art does. And just like Baroque art, architecture is very intricate and it has a lot of turns and twists and turns and stuff like that. And so there are a lot of ornaments in that music that are not written. They're implied. And, and, and if you're going to perform that music, you're going to have to use ornaments, but you can't just throw them out there. There, 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 are, there are things that sound right to the type of music and things that don't. And so once again, really listening and to that to that music is very very important for you to be able to, to have the correct performance practices for that if if you're going to imitate that if you're not then, then that's okay you can play them straight some beautiful music whether it's ornamented or not that's that's still okay you can enjoy it just just as much uh, but some some of those things may not be written and you'll 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 see that they're that they're played that's stylistically too all right, so this is one of the things, let's see. I want to share a couple of examples of this. And there are, there are many. Uh, one of the examples that I want to show you is, let's go back over here. So let's look at, at, a, at a swing example here. This is, um, this is Blues and Hoss Flat, which is a great great song and probably the, the the best example of swing that I can give you is Count Basie and his orchestra and so Basie the orchestra was well known for for uh, playing swing at a really really laid-back style so the swung swung eighth notes are written like just straight eighth notes like that but they're approximated as a triplet. So instead of going one te, two te, one te, two te, they're kind of approximated as one le two, le one, le two, le one, le two, but it's not really exact. And with swing, the distance between those two notes is greater when you're going slow, much more pronounced than when, than when you're going fast. When you're going fast, the swing actually gets gets closer together. So a piece that's really slow would be one, lay two, lay one, lay two, lay. So really, really kind of dragging and really on the back side of the beat. Where if you're going fast, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba almost almost no swing at all. And that's still considered swing. So anyway, enjoy this. This is blues and house flat. Let me look at the thing with the... Thank you. 
So you can find a lot of examples of, of uh, bands trying to, attempting to, to swing like that, and nobody actually can accomplish it. So uh, <laughs> Basie was, was kind of like the... Uh, uh, kind of like the mecca of, of that. that, and that doesn't mean that 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 bands like like a community jazz band and stuff like that that they can't try and keep trying for that, you know. And 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 we do. I mean, I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm in a group right now that, that we do kind of okay when when we sing, but not like that, not like that. And so we all try to 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 kind of get close to that to that goal. And a lot of it, once again, has to do with really listening. To a lot of this stuff, a lot of this stuff. Uh, another example, uh, especially on the classical side, this is, and uh, I'm going to start it uh, kind of like um, this is a Blue Danube, and it has a, a, a long intro, and I don't want to concentrate on the on the uh, on the intro, but there there's a waltz and there's a waltz, and there's a Viennese waltz, and and one of the the ways that the Vienna Philharmonic plays a waltz is very, very different than the way that anybody else plays a waltz. And that's because of tradition, uh, and it's not written like that, especially, you know, the, the feel of one, two, three, one, two, three, boom, ching, ching, boom, ching, ching, boom, ching, ching. That's not how the Vienna plays it. That's how the rest of us humans play it. Uh, and so there's a long, long tradition to, to especially to play, to play in the Strauss waltzes in, in a particular way. And I'll let you hear that after I let you hear this. Now, by contrast, I don't, I don't really want to, want to make this uh, the, the Melbourne Community Orchestra. I don't, I don't want you to think that I think that this is an inferior orchestra. It's a community orchestra, and they're actually really good. And there's going to be a huge difference in the in the production sound between between what I'm going to show you after this and, and this one. So, but I am by no means harping on 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 this orchestra. It would be um, if I was conducting a community orchestra, I would not expect that orchestra to sound like the Vienna Philharmonic playing one of these waltzes. Let me just kind of put it that way. So they do really, really well, but I want you to concentrate on their feel of three here because this is this is why you and I this is how you and I would most likely approach this. This is after the intro, I think. So listen to that. Boom, ching, ching, boom, ching, ching, boom, ching, ching, very. So you can kind of kind of get it. Uh, the, it's it's definitely a community orchestra. Some s tuning issues and, and that kind of stuff. And, and a lot of the sound is really uh, the, one of the reasons why it sounds so weird is just because of production. So it's just the mic mics are not in the right place and all that kind of stuff. But it's a good it's a good orchestra. Uh, so they're 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 doing what you and I would do. Now there's a difference between that and I'm gonna. This is the Vienna Philharmonic with. Um, What's his face? Karajan, Herbert von Karajan, at the lead. And this one, I'm going to play the whole the whole way through. So, or maybe not. It's it's ten full minutes. So I'm not going to play it all ten minutes. But I really want you to focus on what happens when they actually go into the waltz, uh, and and the that feel of one two three that they have, which is not boom ching ching boom ching ching. It isn't sometimes, but. But it isn't, and and uh, all of the time, and they're so tight in the way that, that they do it. Is it's this is a 
this is something that's always baffled me because I, I think I know what they're doing rhythmically. And if I was going to actually express it numerically, I'd, I'd have a hard time doing that. So it's more like, this is more like swung eighth notes. So check this out. I'll, I'll let, I'll let the introduction go. Cause I, I, I skipped it for the first one, but. So I'm, I'm, I just kind of want, want to put a hold here and knowing that I'll, I'll put a, um, a, a link up here so you can, um, so you can listen to this without my interruption. But what I want you to pay attention to is listen to the distance between two and th one and two and two and three. It's not the same. It, the, the, the measure is not numbered exactly the same. The distance between one and two is slightly shorter which makes the distance between two and three extremely long. So, so much that you just kind of go, are they, uh, it, it, it's, it's almost like a, like, like a fermata every measure or something like that. Sometimes it takes so long to get to B3, you're kind of wondering, are they dragging? And they're not. It's it, that rhythm, if, 
some people might might say well you can you can indicate that rhythm that 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 b1 is really is really a dotted dotted eighth note followed by 16th tied over to the second beat not exactly if you, if you really actually slow that measure down and 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 actually put down the math to it that's it's not exact there's no way that i that i could probably represent that that rhythm to you the, the closest one would be dotted at 16th so one ah uh, three one ah uh, three dum 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 ba ba dum 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 but it's not it's not it's it's not even close to to that well it's close but you can't really put it in 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 the words you actually have to feel it and these guys are are masters at it and and you see that that even even with something that can't be written, they're really, really tight. They're all together. There's no, there, are, there aren't people playing in, in between there. So I'm going to let you, uh, I'm going to let this go, but we're, we're at, at, at the end of our, of our time today. So I'm just going to let this go. So if you want to, you want to cut out here, then I'll see you next week. If not, I'll see you at the end of the video. Enjoy the rest of it. Bye.
Now they're just showing off. Okay, so that's that's the that's the, the big idea. I heard um, I heard a story about about why it is that they take so long. So so the the second step is taken so quickly, and that that they take so long for the third step. And I, I'm I'm sure that this is just kind of like an urban um, urban legend or something like that. But but uh, it's um, the, the story is that, that they did that on purpose because these were all ballroom dances and they were noticing that guys were kind of, because, because waltzes were in three, that, that, that men had a real, real hard time with that, especially with that, with that third step. So to actually give them an opportunity, because they could take one and two, they could take the first two steps relatively quickly, but it always took them a little bit longer to get that third step in. So so that they did that in adjustment for putzes who couldn't dance. I, I don't know about that, but, but, uh, but it's a good story to tell anyway. But, but, uh, but can you tell, could you hear what I, what I mean? The distance between two and three is like, damn, that's a long, long way between two and three. It's certainly not the boom ching ching that we're used to, is it? You know, and that doesn't mean that every time that you play a Strauss waltz, that you have to play it that way. You don't, but 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 it's a, it's it's also a way to 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 illustrate that not everything in music, rhythm can be communicated. It isn't stylistically. That's not something. And even in, in professional orchestras, if you say let's play it in the style in the style of Vienna, not everybody can copy that. You know, they they can approximate it if if you want to, but it's not. It's just that just that band that plays it like that. You know, when you hear, even if you hear the Berlin Philharmonic, they, they don't, they don't play it like that either. You know, so there you have it. So I think that we are, we are done for tonight. Any, any comments, suggestions, any, anything to add to the, to the stuff tonight? One of the things that struck me on that piece was the number of cases where they really delayed the downbeat in a measure. You know, it's like the, there'd be this lift and then go down to the downbeat. That happened over and over yeah. you know, at the beginning of a new phrase or something like that. They were constantly changing tempos. Well, some of that is actually conducted. <coughs> yeah. conducted. Yeah. But really, most conductors, when, when they get up, to conduct the, the the Vienna Philharmonic, most of them, especially the ones, well, most of them will let them have the reins. Yeah. You no, know, they've been at it much longer than any conductor has, basically. And I hate to say that because, like Karajan and stuff like that, there were monsters on the podium, but yeah, you know, at some point. You know, the, the experts on that are, are mostly the locals, <laughs> you know.